Well, hello there, and welcome to Cup of Hope. I am Stephanie Winslow, and it is a great morning indeed, as we are here together. Thank you for, for joining me, for participating in Cup of Hope. So let's grab our cups and get them lifted up to God and ask Him to fill them up with the hope that He has for us today. And I believe that uh, every day, every morning, that He gives us another day to fill our lungs with the air um, that he has given us and to to step into what he has for us. Um, I believe that he always has hope for us and uh, that it can be found in the word of God as we d choose to put him first to seek his what he has for us. So um, today and, and all of this week we have been spending time in Colossians 1 and uh, we're going to wrap up this week finishing it with these two verses from uh, Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Yesterday we spent some time talking about the joy that comes through having a grateful heart and, and just believing in the fact that God has an inheritance for us, an inheritance prepared for us. And we kind of left this cliffhanger of what is the inheritance that he has. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. That God has a great uh, promise of an inheritance planned out for us, um, should we choose to accept it. And uh, so let's let's read. The, and we're reading from the New Living Translation again. This is Colossians one, verses thirteen and fourteen, which says, "For He has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of His dear Son, who purchased our freedom." And forgave our sins. I'm going to read it one more time. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So the what is the inheritance? It is now that we our inheritance is in the king, kingdom of heaven, that in the kingdom of, of Jesus, the, the kingdom that he prepared in advance for us, that when we choose um, to say yes to Jesus, we now have like this access card that, that allows us access into heaven. But there was first a price that had to be paid for us. And that price is what the verse 14 tells us is that it's the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. So we, before we were able to set foot into his kingdom, before we were granted sonship and, and daughtership into the kingdom of God, there first had to be a price paid. There had to be an admission ticket you know, paid. We had to swipe the card um, and, and get in. And that was taken care of by Jesus when he chose to come to the earth as a baby, live a, a difficult life on this earth, preparing um, and, and then also bearing the price on the cross when he chose to go and be sacrificed on the cross and be surrendered to God in his will. And he said, if it, you know, if there's any other way, God, will you let this cup pass? Will you, if there's any other way that I wouldn't have to go through all this pain on the cross and be crucified and and bear the cost and the and the weight of every sin of every human that will ever live and breathe on this earth that had ever lived before him and that would ever come after him he took all of that sin and shame on his shoulders so that we could now live a life in union with god uh, in union in heaven and he not only was restoring that relationship, but he also went ahead of us and prepared for us this kingdom that we get to go and, and participate in and, and be united with God. Um, so that is what our inheritance is. So to me, um, what is most impactful about these verses is, yes, we get to have... Uh, and the entry card, <laughs> if you will, the access card to the kingdom. But the question is, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to say yes to him? Are you going to say yes to him? And I'm going to go back up to, to verse 13 because there's this little word that I think gets tucked in that we may miss if we just read through these verses in haste or we kind of get to the part about the 
and that um, that we have freedom and forgiveness of our sins and all of that is wonderful first thing and I think this is so applicable to where we are right now if we choose to acknowledge it um, and that is that he the words of Colossians 1 13 say for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness we have to be willing to admit that we need to be rescued we need to be willing to admit that we need to be rescued from a kingdom of darkness that we uh, were born into because of, of the sin of Adam and Eve, but also the kingdom of darkness that we have just chosen to live in. We have chosen to participate in. We have chosen to say yes to the way we want to live instead of the way that God has called us to live in his word. We have chosen to 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 choose <laughs> we have chosen to have a choice we want to have choice more than we want to live in alignment with the word of god we have chosen to say yes to the desires of our flesh than the desires of the word of god we have chosen to say yes to the desires of wanting to to have a freedom of choice and to not live according to the word of god and so that is what I think God is, is asking. He's checking my spirit today. And I think maybe he's, he's asking all of those who are watching and who will watch this video is where is it with your soul and what is it that you're doing and you're choosing to do with Jesus today? Are you choosing to stand in alignment with the word of God and what he is asking you and calling you to? And if you're choosing and you're wanting to participate, if you are wanting to participate in the inheritance that he gave you, which is the kingdom of God, be mindful that it, that was there was a very hefty price that was paid that you would be able to have participation in the kingdom of God. Do you not then recognize that it is not a choice to live one foot in the world and one foot out of the world? You have to make a choice. What is the choice going to be? Are you going to choose to say yes to your fleshly desires and to live your own way to say, I'm going to keep on living um, a life of choice that whatever feels good in the moment, whatever um, makes sense for me and my family in the moment, whatever um, my flesh wants to respond to and how my flesh wants to live. Those are the things that I'm going to pursue and I'll pursue Jesus when it's convenient or when it feels good in the moment. To pursue him or when it doesn't disrupt my comfort I'm gonna choose him all of these things we could say right because he gives us free will and and a free choice to live that way or if we want to participate in his kingdom in the same way that he Jesus laid down his life on the cross he's calling us also to surrender and to lay down our uh, our choosing right it, our choice he wants us to lay down um, our desires our fleshly desires the things that the world tells us are are good are not always what's best for us the things that the world tells us ah, you know that that little thing is it gonna is it gonna make much difference um, no one will notice or that thing and you have the right to choose right it's it's so almost um, just so slightly um, enticing that we get to choose to have our own way. So what is it that you're dealing with today? I don't know. But uh, what I do know is that I believe that God is calling us into a deeper level of repentance, a deeper, deeper level of relationship with him, a deeper uh, understanding of the price that Jesus paid for us on the cross, and then a, a, a reckoning to, to say, um, will you choose this day to pursue alignment with God in his word or will you keep going your own way? That's a choice you have to make. So Heavenly Father, God, this, this word just to me hit me this morning uh, and I just pray that there is nothing that I said that is out of alignment with what your Holy Spirit would have for us today. And God, I pray that you would... Um, that your Holy Spirit would be present here and now for each and every person who listens to this word in this moment or even 10 years from now, God, that you would help us to see that the choices that we are making today 
um, are so important and that we can step in to this inheritance that you have for us, but recognizing that there was a price that was paid and that if we choose to say yes to your kingdom, God, that that means that we are choosing to step into alignment with your will and with your way, that we have to pick up this book that you have given us and dive into it and recognize that there's going to be things in there that we don't want to see. There's going to be things in there that are going to change us and change our life that we're going to have to say no to the things of this world and the things that our flesh wants to pursue, but it's not what you have for us. You have greater things for us. You have greater things for us. And God, I pray that, that we would have the courage to say no to the things of this world, that we would choose to pursue you, um, heart, soul, mind, and body in all of our strength and, and ignore and, and walk away from and to uh, ignore to shut out the noise of this world and pursue everything that you have for us because you have a greater inheritance than anything that this world could offer. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen and amen. Be blessed and have a wonderful weekend. And I encourage you that if you have not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, would you do that? Would you share hope with your friends and your family? And also, uh, encourage your friends and family to say no and the, and the choices that the world is, is asking us to participate in today and to say yes to Jesus, the only one who can give you inheritance like this. Be blessed. Bye-bye.